Hey there everybody, Samuel Day here and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this into this to create the artwork for the debut Reclaimer single already over. Just a reminder, this is one of several videos I'm probably going to be cross-posting on both the Reclaimers and the Samuel Day social and YouTube channels. So if you're watching it in one of those places, like say if you're watching this on a Samuel Day channel, Facebook or YouTube, go over to the Reclaimers channel as well and make sure to give us a like or a subscription or whatever applies in the network you're checking it out on. So I'm going to show you the process I went through to create this artwork and I'm also going to take you on a tour of the little details that you may have missed in the already over album art. All right, let's get into it. So when I first started coming up with concepts, I knew the general idea would be that I wanted to be looking like a completely armed to the teeth tactical soldier standing next to a small kind of dwarvish, tragically unprepared devilish character, which really went along with the themes of the song. But I went through kind of a range of concepts. So let's take a step back and look at some of the concepts that I went through. One of the original ideas that I had was to just look kind of like a tactical SWAT soldier standing next to uh, the, the bad guy being more like just in a black hoodie and holding a squirt gun. I have these sketches that I did of these characters, but these actually started as photographs. So we did a little photo shoot up at my church and I just borrowed some Nerf guns from a kid that I know because I was like these look pretty good so we belted a little sidearm to my thigh I'm just standing there holding a Nerf blaster looking tough notice my trigger discipline here and I knew that I just wanted to use this one so I could trace over it and not be overly concerned about getting all the proportions exactly right and, uh, and paint over this too so all the facial elements were already there it's not that I can't draw in proportions portion or that I can't do faces but I had a deadline on this and when you're working on a deadline you give yourself every help that you can so we did the same thing uh, for the enemy you know we put gloves on me because originally I was going to make it to where you could see the enemy's hands and it was gonna be bones like a little bit of a grim reaper in fact I even bought a little toy skeleton from a local store the hands were gonna be skeletal the face was going to be a skull and originally the weapon was going to be a squirt gun as I started getting into the process and started doing my sketches I realized that the camera placement didn't make sense so if you take a look at both of these and where my horizon line is in both of these photos even if I were to take myself here and squash me down the perspective is off because the camera is at my shoulder height both times so we actually had to go back and do a second photo shoot where we took the photo with the camera way higher and because of the lenses that I had available, we also had to take it way further away. This way, the horizon line is actually above my head in the bad guy photo, but at my shoulder level in the good guy photo. They would actually end up looking like they were standing next to each other, not only in scale, but also in perspective. So moving on to the sketches, I started with myself in conceptualizing some of the armor, and the further I got into it, the more I just decided, you know what, I'm going to try a whole bunch of different ideas. I'm not going to live on myself. I want to see how far I can push it in the fantastical direction. And then I'll dial it back to something that's a little bit more grounded in reality. This is a rejected sketch. It's a little bit more anime, right? I've got these like Gundam-like shoulders. I ended up dialing it back and going for something that looked more tactical and more grounded in reality. And one of the things that made me a little bit sad was that you can actually see a lot of these abdomen plates in the final painting because they're covered up by my hand. I brought the shoulders back to a little bit more of a form factor, made sure that things look like I could move in them, but I also wanted to maintain the sci-fi elements of kind of having these light bars that don't really do anything or what look like these little runs of, of inset wiring all along the armor plates. I also added things like a smoke grenade strapped to my shoulder and a sword because come on who doesn't want a sword then if we take a look at our bad guy I actually designed him head to toe even though in the final artwork uh, you really are only seeing us in what's called a cowboy shot if you're into filmmaking which is from the knees up um, but I wanted to make sure that I designed this full character because I knew I was going to use his whole body in the lyric video and possibly other collaterals as I got more and more into this I decided against the skeleton look 
and went with sort of sprightly little devil. So his just kind of two glowing eyes floating in an inexplicably dark hood, um, the pointy shoes. And then also instead of doing bone hands, I decided to go with the classic three-fingered little bad guy. Decided to move away from the squirt gun and instead use a knife. The classic saying, bringing a knife to a gunfight. But these are the original sketches that became the painting that you see here. At some point in this process, I started second guessing myself and I was concerned that this is going to be too fantasy looking. This is not going to make any sense, you know, with me in the mainstream and I don't want to put people off from it. I started playing around with some alternate art, still playing up this idea of bringing a knife to a gunfight. And this looked really good and I almost ended up going with it because it was simple and it was straightforward. But I decided, one, you know, I've put so much effort into the artwork already. Two, I started looking around at some other hard rock groups. A lot of them included fantastical characters and, and uh, you know, these kind of deep cut paintings. And I decided, you know what, if they can do it, so can I. And I think more people will appreciate that craftsmanship than will be weirded out or off put by it. But then step two was to paint each of these characters separately. And I use a process where I first start out painting the characters in grayscale and then I colorize them. There's a lot of layers in, in here, <laughs> a lot of layers in my armor painting. So even if I just turn off a bunch of these layers, you can see my progress kind of backtracking. Some of the shadows, some of the more enhanced contrast. You can see some of the details coming in and going away as I do this. And this was sort of the way that I worked. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't making changes that I couldn't undo all the time. And I actually went with a different a different process with the bad guy, but I wasn't as sure of myself when I was painting myself, painting the good guy here, because I just hadn't been doing digital painting in a while. I, I want to point out a few of the details here just because I think they're interesting and you don't always get to appreciate all of them in the final product. Here on my armor, I've got my logo from my solo project there on my chest plate, and then the Reclaimers logo on my shoulder. I went back and forth with myself about which should appear where, but when I thought about military uniforms, I realized, well, their name tag is normally on their chest, but the national flag is normally on their shoulder. Because this is a Reclaimers project, then the Reclaimers logo should be on the shoulder where the country would be represented, and my personal logo should be on my chest where the name tag would be represented. Also included this little RE01, like Reclaimers 1 or Reclaimer 1. I just thought that was a nice little um, trick. Wanted to be armed to the teeth, so the sword with a little bit of just weathering on it uh, along the handle looking like it's been used. Some battle scratches, just to look like I wasn't fresh out of the factory, like I'd actually already been through some stuff. The smoke grenade, uh, little serial numbers on the gun. It's darker around these vents on the blaster. Some dirt on the end there. And then also some dirt and mud on the boots. One other little detail that I thought was fun is that I put some more damage on the right knee than the left knee because I'm right-handed. And this even happens to my jeans. I tend to kneel on my right knee a whole lot more often than on my left. And that causes me to get a hole in the right knee of my jeans. So moving on to the bad guy here, a lot of similar considerations. Same thing here, did the whole thing in grayscale and then colorized it after the fact. And then when I finally composited everything into this final piece of artwork, even more color work went in into making these two things look like they belong together. I wanted to give as many indications that I could that he was unprepared for this battle, unable to finish what he started. So I gave him all of the hallmarks of a Grim Reaper, the hood, the long cloak, and the scythe, but I also wanted him to look modern and like he belonged in the same world as the character I had created for myself. So I wanted him to look a little bit tactical. His clothing is a little bit tattered. He's got kind of this little battle pauldron on his shoulder, um, but some things that indicate that he's really not going to follow through, not be going to be able to finish this fight. His scythe is irreparably broken. He's got a gas mask, whereas I don't which suggests he can't even breathe the same air. If you take a look at the gauge on his tank, it's on empty. 
and the tube running from his gas mask back to his tank is patched up. He has no guns. All he's got is his nasty knife, but that's not gonna do much from a distance. And I also thought it was a really interesting idea to put these scrolls on the character. So whereas this is a bandolier where you would normally see bullets or grenades, he's just got scrolls. So maybe in those scrolls are curses. If you wanna go a, a step deeper, even reminders of the past, bad news for him to bring up and try to gain a psychological or a spiritual edge of some kind. But that's, uh, that's all the tactical equipment that he has. You can see there's a tear in his hood that's been poorly uh, stitched up and the same here on his coat. The bottom of his shirt is frayed and starting to to, to get some holes so just a whole I wanted to give a lot of little visual indicators that he's already through the ringer and he cannot finish what he started moving on to our last thing here the final piece of artwork I went through a lot of color variations with this and I'm going to show those to you so I really kind of had a struggle with what to do with the background colors and what details to include what's too far what's not enough I tried with this kind of murky background some different color variations red this one I, I liked quite a bit this sort of orange action movie look but I thought that it wasn't dynamic enough it looked just a little bit too like I had fully committed to the action movie look and I wanted to bring a little bit more sophistication to the color than just everything's on fire. So I played around with some lighter reds, some pinkish stuff, uh, because I also wanted to show that the sound of this song isn't just hard rock, but there are some pop inspired elements in there. There's some modernistic elements in there. All these different color variations. The original idea for this artwork was actually for there not to be much of a background at all. I wanted it to be sterile, sci-fi, and matter-of-fact just on a white background. But when I did that, they didn't feel like they were sticking to anything, and it was hard to make this whole thing feel like it had much of any context. So I decided to go ahead and stick with the background, going through all these different color variations here. Tried some logos in the background. Uh, just I want to show you that I went through a lot of revisions. <laughs> it took me a while to land on what I finally ended up using. I didn't want to lose all the juicy details like the pointy shoes if I didn't have to. But ultimately I realized that this was going to be an album cover and people were going to be viewing it sometimes online that big. And if I was overly concerned with showing the whole character all the time, people weren't going to see any of the juicy details at all. And plus I still had to fit the text into the design. So finally I landed here with what ended up being the final product. I decided to go with complementary colors in the background after I started looking at some, honestly, some video game covers. And they tended to go with this teal and amber color scheme quite a lot. And it allowed me to balance the modern blues and the neon feel with that kind of action movie warm lighting and, and fire bravado. So if you take a look, for instance, at my armor, when I turn this off, all of the warm light goes away. And so I tend to have more of a bluish hue. But that didn't make sense with the fact that in the background it looks like the warm light is on the right hand side. So I ended up doing a bunch of coloration work to really sort of blend that in and make it look more contextual. I also wanted to make some moves to keep this dynamic and give it not just contrast, but depth. And so that's where these embers came in. I started adding some different ashes flying around at different levels of motion blur to make it look like there was some forward and backward depth and just some kind of chaotic movement and sparks flying in the scene. I pulled some different compositing tricks once I got things in here. So if you want to take a look at the edge of the armor, I wanted to make sure that these lights in the scene also made some sense. What, you know, this glow in the background, which meant that the characters needed to be backlit, which is not how I had originally painted them. If you look at this original painting, there's no line of light on my, on this shoulder on the left here. There's no line of light on my face, whereas in the final painting, there is. You can actually see I have a layer here called backlight highlights. And if I turn it on and off, 
you can see a drastic difference along that whole profile of my side there. Very last thing, because I know this video is probably already a little bit too long, I did some compositing tricks for those of you who are digital painting nerds. I used things like some curve adjustments over top of everything to really help glue things together. So this curves adjustment here, if we pull it up, I'm just ever so slightly increasing the contrast, bringing the shadows down just a little bit tighter, pushing the highlights up, adding a little bit of Instagram-y hype to it without blowing out all of my details. And if I turn this off, the difference certainly is slight as I turn it on and back off. The highlights get just a little bit harsher and the shadows cave in and things don't look as washed out. It helps things look just a little bit more cinematic. And I've got a lot of layers in here where I did little things like that. I have an overlay that you can see is all around the outside edge that helps kind of encompass these characters so it looks like the smoke and the shadow and all of the stuff that's going on all around them isn't just behind them but it's also in front of them. Again, there was depth, and these characters seem like they were a little bit more in the scene as opposed to just on top of it. I hope you enjoyed that, and if you have any questions about the process that I didn't cover, or maybe you're an artist and you're looking for a few tips, make sure to leave me a comment and we can have a cool conversation. Also, be sure to grab Already Over on your favorite online marketplace or from your favorite streaming service by going to the link in the description of this video. And also, check out some of the sweet merchandise on the online store, which is also linked in the description. I hope you found that interesting or learned something from it, and so until next time, I love you, Jesus loves you, and as always, Onward and upward.